Hello everyone and welcome to episode 19 of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. Today I'm delighted to be joined in conversation by the amazing Amy from the Grounded in Maine podcast. During this inspiring episode, Amy shares her journey towards homesteading, offering us simple ideas for living a more sustainable lifestyle, from preserving homegrown foods to the community networks that reduce waste by sharing and swapping what we produce with others when they need it. We also took time to explore how podcasting has impacted both our lives and given us the opportunity to connect with some amazing everyday heroes who are making positive changes in the world. By sharing their passion and wisdom with the beautiful communities our podcasts attract, we have been able to spread and inspire more hope for the future of the natural world. Hello and welcome Amy, it's really really lovely to have you joining us today in conversation on this episode of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. Oh, Fiona, I'm thrilled to be here. I'm so excited to to finally meet you and, and be part of this. I am, I'm excited to learn more about you. I've uh, followed your own podcast, um, Grounded in Maine, for a while. So I'm, I'm looking forward to learning more about your your journey with that and uh, and more about sustainability. Um, I just tend to kick off just with a, a nice question about what's your sort of nature story and um, how nature's been a part of your life and if you've got any fond memories or ways that it's evolved just anything that you'd like to sh- share about how nature's been part of your journey so far okay well um i mean i i don't remember much about my childhood so i can't go back that far um but i can say um you know my husband and i have been together for 16 years and uh he uh, actually is an arborist so he has oh, a, he wow. has a nature story <laughs> oh fantastic um, <laughs> but i have not had jobs that made lots of money so i you know i lived on a farm with um some friends way when i was in my 20s and so i learned about uh, like canning and pickling beets and stuff like that and so i had i had a little bit of exposure to that but when um, when we first got together, we put a big garden in, and uh, my plan was to offset my lack of income by saving us money by growing food and preserving it. And so that has been um, that's my my job. That's your um, your sort of foundation in it is um, a very sensible approach to saving money, right, but comes right. with lots of benefits as well. Um, right. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm a terrible gardener, but I do enjoy gardening. <laughs> I don't, I don't love the bugs and I really don't like to sweat. So oh, I'm, I'm a, I'm a fair weather gardener. I'm a fair weather friend, um, but uh, I do enjoy gardening and I love, you know, every day going out and checking on my, my plant babies and seeing how that, how much they've grown and how they're doing and make sure they're doing okay. And, and then when harvest time comes, it's just like, the most exciting thing. I mean, I just, you just appreciate everything so much more knowing, uh, one that you went out in the bugs and sweated and, (laughs) um, and that you grew and, you know, and I'm, I've started, we have a greenhouse as well. My husband put a greenhouse in, so I do a lot of my seed starting in the greenhouse. And so I, I can start seeds because I usually, I used to do it in the house and then it goes from the house to the cold like yeah. you know too cold and then the they shock. all die yeah <laughs> so like I, I had this really exciting thing happening in the house and then i bring it outside and kill it so the greenhouse is a nice transition <laughs> yeah um, yeah it, i mean it's it's um it is quite hard it's not like you have to take a bit of perseverance and trial and error to grow your own don't you it's i think sure for a lot of people it's like this lovely ideal and actually it's it's quite hard but it is like you said hugely rewarding if you can nurture them all the way through and you can get to harvest point absolutely absolutely and i mean i because i i have started um trying to only use seeds um it's it's extra satisfying at harvest time because you know, even when they become seedlings, I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is where I would, I used to buy them at. Yeah. Um, 
but uh, it is it is very rewarding. And then you know when they come to fruition, I'm just like I did that from the very start. That's very cool. And I really want to learn to um, be better at seed saving so that okay. I don't have to purchase those seeds. Yeah, I was going to um, ask you that if you've um, you've managed to to delve into harvesting your own and. Uh, I do. I do with some. I There are some that I haven't figured out yet. Um, I mean, I, I'll save like cucumbers and we don't have it. We don't usually have a squash harvest as much as I love squash um, because we have bugs that just eat. They just decimate the yeah, squash. Okay. So we don't really have squash. I have to buy that, those seeds every year. But um, what do I, I save the... Um, you know, if we have peppers, cucumbers, tomatoes, I'll save all of those. All the ones that I can see the seeds. Yeah. Like I, ha I haven't figured out how the lettuce yeah. or carrots or, you know, beets. I would, yeah. I just, I haven't figured that out. I have to do more work on that, but. Yeah. But that's part of the fun, isn't it? It's this like kind of lifelong learning and yeah, <laughs> there's, there's always, you know, you, you sort of, you take one little step and you get that sorted and then you're like, oh, now I, there's another step that I can look into. And yeah. 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 But um, yeah. And then, so I have a, um, I have a, well, I, there's a farm that's about a mile from my house and they, they about six years ago started, um, a nonprofit and so they oh, grow organic okay. produce just to donate it to the, oh, the wow, food pantries and um i went there for an open house just thinking oh that's fun and then i just got you know i know the farm manager and i just you know so i've been volunteering there every week for i mean except for oh. when it's too cold to do anything for the this is my sixth year oh wow um, goodness me that's incredible what it's great yeah talk great. about rewarding yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but we you know we've had the same group for the last you know four or five years and you know every saturday morning where it's like friends hanging out not even you know working and uh and then you know every year when we get the totals that we've grown and and mm -hmm. put together and the number of volunteers has expanded it's just multiplied it's oh, amazing wow and um, the amount of people that you can help as well like because i mean i see in this country food banks are for people who are are struggling quite a bit to to put food on the table for themselves and their family right. so it, it's the same over over there yeah um so yeah that's and and to grow them lovely healthy nutritious food as well is even better I mean, right it's not just the yeah. boxed processed yeah uh, yeah. just add water or whatever yeah i mean i i love that too i'm glad for that the you know shelf stable is <laughs> there's something to be said for that yeah. um but uh to have organic produce um to have something fresh is very special and i'm glad to be part of that um but yeah. so i met one of the friends that i met doing that um is actually staying with us right now she's in between places but um she and i were weeding one day and just talking about how cool it would be to um start a youtube channel and talk to people about homesteading skills because we're yeah. both really okay. interested in homesteading and so we were like what if we you know started a youtube channel and we talked to people about homesteading and then every week we would take one of the skills and try it in our lives and see how it would work and um and then just report back like you know this was yep. great i'm totally keeping this and you know <laughs> this was so way well. too big <laughs> for my life yeah. yeah stuff like that but then at the same time you know we're still learning stuff yeah. you know we're yeah. still learning those skills whether we have space in our lives or not um but then you know and so that ended up not working out completely um and so the i my podcast is um about sustainability grounded in maine was was formed from that uh, because it's it's sort of in the same mindset and it's something that I can, and I was thinking um, honestly a podcast no one has to see my face yeah. and now now here I am with <laughs> I started a YouTube channel now and I'm <laughs> guesting on podcasts with my face right there uh, but I was like <laughs> you know I, I could do a podcast and people can just listen to my voice and no one has to see how goofy I am I um, know it too. Not and sure. I'm learning about sustainability too. Yeah. 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 I I mean that's similar for me as well. I love 
the opportunity to meet and talk to just this diverse sect of people from all around the world as well that's like the other amazing side of it and just learn from them and their experiences and just hear these amazing stories and it just it kind of it fills me up like fills my heart up from absolutely from yeah absolutely yeah i know i feel so lucky i it's it's amazing i mean i just recorded 30 either 33 or 34 i just I, it's been a really busy week <laughs> <laughs> i think i did three podcast episodes this week um and so 33 or 34 i think and every almost every one of them has been a different person and you know mm -hmm. they bring something different to my world and i just i am so i'm so lit up by all of it yeah and I, and that's for me as well it's this sense of community and i guess that's part of like your volunteering project as well is just there's kind of communities coming together and i think the amount of like power in that like we kind of lost that for a little while in our society didn't we but actually sure like i think i think i don't know maybe covid was a bit of a catalyst for like people realizing like it was lacking in our lives even even pre covid you know we i think i think there's like a bit even more momentum now sort of post post the pandemic to really sort of like build these networks and communities mm -hmm. and build each other up and support each other and yeah i just i, I love it it's <laughs> absolutely i agree 100 percent so um i know something else that you do is you you've got your jam business don't you i do yeah <laughs> i do um yeah i mean that also it's it's sort of started from the, the gardening as well um, but my sister my sister got married and i as my gift to them i made little jam little jars of jam oh, for everyone that lovely. attended the oh, wedding, some lovely. little favors. And they were different, you know, all different flavors. It was whatever I felt like. Um, and they just, they loved it. And they <laughs> were like, Amy, you have to do this. And the funny thing, Fiona, is that I am not, I do not have a business mind at all. <laughs> and I, um, I think we were, we were talking a little bit about, um, Oh, we were talking in the very beginning before I before recording, I think that yeah. um, we don't feel that special. And, you know, I, we don't see how special we are. And yeah. so I, you know, I was, I was out of work for a little while after a car accident. And um, I, instead of just watching um, YouTube or Netflix or whatever, I was doing workshops and webinars and stuff oh, like that. Yeah. And just like, you know, using that time and I'm mm -hmm. not saying I'm super smart. I just was, I was really doing a lot of networking and building community. And, um, I decided that that was the time to start the jam business because I had time to yeah. wait and get paperwork together. And so by the time I was able to walk again, it was it was like four months I was out of work, but by the time I was able to walk again, I had a kitchen set up and I oh, had, wow. you know, I had picked up some fruit and I had, you know, I had made jam before, of course, but, um, you know, so I was all ready to go. So and so a it's different been... a different scale though, I guess, like making it to, to sell than just sort of for, for your own. <clears throat> it's not really. I mean, it's not because it's not, it's not, it's, it's a very small jam business. It's just me. There's only so much one person can do. Um, and I only have, because I have to um, use a commercial kitchen, not my own. I only have one day that I can do that. Okay. So there's literally only so much I can do. In the day, um, yeah. And I, I often will make jam every Sunday. I, like that's my thing tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> but you know, there are also times I, I, I do try really, really hard to not have to make jam in the summer. Yeah. Like I, I'm, I'm bulking up my inventory right now okay. because in the summertime I have to pick the berries. Yeah. I, p I pick a lot of the berries to save money and to also, um, practice some quality control because then yeah. I can make sure that it's the best. Um, well, and you know where it comes from as well, which I think is also nice, isn't it? Then if you've, if you've picked it yourself, you kind of, you've got, you know, that whole chain through the yeah. process, haven't you? And it's just so, it's really so exciting. I mean, strawberries go really, really quickly. I can just, I can pick a bunch. I only have 45 minutes. So I, it's just as much as I can pick in that time frame. And um, so I just, I pick as much as I can, which is about a flat. And I, 
you know, after work, I wash them and freeze them. And <laughs> so that, you know, that's what I do in the summer. And I, but be all, also because I don't like to be hot. I really, my brain I, I was going to say, I can imagine it's pretty like hot, hot work, <laughs> like making, making yeah. jam and in a commercial kitchen. Yeah. And yeah, so it I was... just, I can't handle any, anything that, that, rev um, that includes brain work in the summer. Like I have to work. We have air conditioning in the house. I, I can work in the house, but outside of the house and doing, you know, like I have to, because I have to carry jars and fruit and all the stuff yeah, to the car yeah. and then to the, to the kitchen and back. I can't, I can't handle that. If I have to, I will. If I don't have to, I'm Cause not. Where, cause you're, you're in Maine and so what temperatures do you get in the summer then? Or is it quite humid? Is that the issue as well? It's, it's really humid. Um, yeah. It's really humid. And some, you know, sometimes the temps get, I know that, um, I don't know what the numbers are in Celsius, but um, in the U S it's like, we get a, up to the high eighties or 90 degrees okay. Fahrenheit. Yeah. Um, which <laughs> is, yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, it's, it's hotter than what we're used to. And I grew up in Maine. And so my, my main blood is not built for that, those temperatures. Um, so you, you get quite cold in the winter as well, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Lately, not so much. I mean, we definitely had, I mean, last week was really cold, but I mean, it's, I, I mean, you can see the sun coming in. It is like, it's gorgeous right now. It's, it's weird. It's weirdly mild. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, I think it's, I think it's all global warming, you know, that everything is just more extreme. Um, yeah. Not yeah. going to get political about that, no. but I, <laughs> it, it is consistently, consistently warmer and colder. Yeah. It's, it's, um, I mean, we, we here have, we've noticed like when we get rain, we get almost like monsoon rain yes. as well. Like it's, you know, we're, we've always been, you know, a temperate climate. We, we don't really get extremes too much, although we, you know, we do get cold winters, warmish summers, but it's like, you know, the, the rain is less consistent. It's like, we can have these dry spells for like a month, six weeks, and then we will have like a month's worth of rain in 24 hours. And, um, I think, and it's, it's that, that's the harder thing to, to deal with is, is kind of just these like quite extreme fluctuations. And, um, it's hard as well, if you're growing your own vegetables and things, you, you're, right. you're having to look at, um, of way different ways of growing and and i mean we we try and sort of harvest what rainwater we can as well um to you know sort of water the garden in in the times when it's dry to keep things growing um i guess does that that's is that sort of um on your side as well in your sustainability things those kind of capturing rainwater <laughs> uh i we do not do that uh i would love to we actually had a rain barrel for a while to catch water but we couldn't i'm not a very handy person and i could not figure out how to get the water to actually water the garden out of the big bucket <laughs> They, they don't make them easy oh. though do they like, like <laughs> uh it might not be that hard i am um, my brain is is not the smarter not harder i i don't work like that i i make things as hard as possible for myself oh, sure. um but um yeah but so yeah jam business i have a I have a jam business i sell basically where i um make the jam and uh, i also ship so i have a website uh, which was developed by a friend of mine who is amazing <laughs> and oh. I pay her in jam yeah oh even better even better the the new currency is I think that's um I mean I guess it's that part of like your homesteading and and sustainability is this kind of like um like these kind of micro um community like transactions that aren't necessarily um you know, it's not, it's not money changing hands, but it's kind of like, like bartering. Trading. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, I think. Yeah. It doesn't happen a lot. I mean, but there are some people that, that we do that with. I mean, so my husband is an arborist um, and he, if you talk to his dad ever, he would say he has been climbing trees since he could walk. <laughs> um, and he would just like climb flagpoles and climb trees all the time. And now he's, he's working with trees. So um, it's cool that he didn't get tired of it. 
Yeah. <laughs> he, um, he, he was obviously in his blood from, <laughs> from right yeah. yeah and his his grandfather actually worked in like radio towers so he used oh, he used okay. to be a climber too his dad would never never <laughs> but um but uh yeah so he when he uh like chips up brush he will offer chips to like he'll bring wood chips to the farm that i volunteer at um as a donation and they'll use them for um paths in the gardens or um there's a there's a local farm that uh that provides meats and he'll put the they'll, they'll put the chips in their barn and um we get credit for meat <laughs> from from them and then the place where i i make my jam is a store and garden and um he'll bring wood chips there and we get a credit toward produce so i mean <laughs> brilliant it's pretty sweet yeah um no it's fun it, it's fantastic it's i think it's really um it's nice to do that there's like there's a different sort of energetic feel to those kind of transactions isn't there and um absolutely yeah and and really just community like we're helping each other out it's pretty great i i my um my grand scheme for this podcast really is to build my community and i've met some pretty amazing people that i want on my team <laughs> We don't live that close together, but just, you know, to have someone to bounce ideas off of or say, you know, I, I really need to learn this. Have you done this? Can you talk me through it? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, and then really if I could find some people that were close by, because I love, I love canning tomatoes. I can do it by myself, but it is so long and it's so tedious. So if you have someone just to talk to or yeah. someone to help with some little things, it will go faster. So you, um, I mean, this is the the other side of producing your own food, isn't it? Is like you, you end up with this massive glut and everything is kind of ripening fairly close proximity. Oh, yes. So you, you need to find these ways to like preserve it and, and keep it and so that you can you can enjoy it for like the months to come <laughs> right right there's like a month month and a half when you're just like oh my gosh please slow down yeah but at the same time you're like yay look at it all come but um there was one year when we um when i was i just thought i cannot i cannot can tomatoes in this heat I just can't and so i froze them all and then we had a big we had a big storm in like october and we lost power for oh, almost no. a week and i lost all of those oh, tomatoes no. and so now i'm like okay i'm canning it does not matter yeah. if i could I, and i'll like last year we had a really bad our garden was really bad and i think it was the drought it might have also just been i don't know I don't know. It could have been any number of things, but so I buy tomatoes from my local farms and I'll can those. It's the best I can do. Yeah. But it, I mean, it's, it, 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 the last year we had quite a bad drought and it was, yeah, it was pretty tough on, on everything. Um, it's amazing to look at it now and, and how everything is, bounced back it's I mean it's incredible actually how resilient um the more established plants are and obviously with like a lot of the food crops are you know fairly short-lived so they I think struggle some of the worst don't they but mm -hmm. um yeah it's so if you're um I've never even canned tomatoes so I don't even know what's involved with it but it sounds it, it sounds like a lot of hard work it's it's not it's not even hard it's just so long because you have it takes you know I'm looking I would can tomatoes in like a quart sized mason jar quart okay. sized and yeah. it takes you know probably five pounds of tomatoes oh, to wow. fill to fill a jar but you have to um, wash the tomatoes and then you blanch the tomatoes so you have to get them in boiling water for like a couple minutes yeah. until the peels crack and then you have to peel them and then you have to cut them and then you have to put them but you're doing it in such large amounts because yeah. you have to have at least you know a certain you can do I think usually like seven quarts in a canning pot yeah okay so you have you know it's like 35 pounds of wow wow tomatoes that you have to do all of those things with yeah 
and then I... and then it cans once it's in the you know when it's in a water bath canner it's like i think it's 45 minutes okay at, at boiling so and then um, and how long um, will that last how long will they last once you've you've got them finished and canned up are they good for sort of six months or something or oh i mean they'll they'll be good for about a year okay okay they're good for about a year i mean seven jars does not last me very long no. i love <laughs> i mean there's nothing better than fresh canned tomatoes no. but um and i love i love um in the winter i always make a big pot of chili i just made a big pot of chili yesterday oh, and nice. um so it just it requires a lot of tomatoes yeah Oh no, that sounds. Oh, but it's, there is just nothing that compares, is there, to having, you know, if if you've managed if you've managed to grow it yourself, or even just you know you've you've prepared it yourself. Just it's just a different. I don't know. The flavor is different, isn't it? I, it's definitely the appreciation. Yeah, <laughs> is there? I mean, especially in February when it's you know there is no chance of anything growing in February, um, except for inside. No, yeah, yeah, it's it's far too cold outside, and but there's no bugs either, so there's a win-win or less bugs, should I say? So. That is absolutely. I know. I when it it was um, it was like fourteen below zero Fahrenheit. I think it was last week, and somebody had posted this silly mi uh, meme that said, um, "There's a zero percent chance of mosquitoes right now." <laughs> You're like yeah <laughs> we're like we got other problems but... yeah, but, yeah. right side no bugs yeah. yes no bugs no sweating yeah <laughs> oh brilliant and um i mean on your podcast you touched a little bit on some of the amazing people that you've met and um do you, have, do you are there any people that you um i don't know just really like stand out to you as just Sure. Right. Oh gosh, so many. I mean, one of I, I I in the beginning I started with friends because I have I I have this habit of surrounding myself with super smart, talented people. Like I think it it <laughs> That's a good habit this, to have. <laughs> it just like it makes me feel smarter just by being around them. Um but I I really I have super smart talent and friends and um I just want to showcase you know, and I also didn't know a lot of people in the beginning, but so, you know, I have a friend who's, I have a couple of friends who are herbalists. My physical therapist is a forager oh, and, <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of who else. Oh, I have a friend who, uh, does beach cleanups. Oh, and, okay. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. And, um, so beach cleanups and she also has these connections. So she also has a connection with, um, lobster people. And there, there is a, a lot of controversy around lobster rope, um, okay. getting, getting whales caught up and, uh, and whales dying. And so uh, she, there are, there are new rules and the, the lobstermen have to, um, the lobster people have to, uh, change their ropes more often, which creates a ton of waste, uh, you know, just changing your ropes and then you have these the, all this rope that is no good and so she has hooked up with um artists like sculptures that will use lobster rope and oh, that's wow. really cool oh that's amazing yeah because i mean this is the 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 thing isn't it is it's like you know you're, you're doing one thing on one hand which is like you're helping yes. the whales and yes. but then it's like oh on the other Great. hand you're now creating all of this waste and yes. how can we use that and yeah so that's Oh, that sounds amazing. That's... So finding a use for all of that rope. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that was a really interesting conversation. Um, there's a lady in town. Well, she's in she's she has a store in town, but um, this lady uh, opened up the first store in New England in Maine called Go Go Refill. And I, I don't know oh, if you okay. have. Do you have a store like that where you yeah, can just go and some... refill? Yeah, yeah, they're they're um not there's not enough of them but they are gaining like sort of traction and popularity um i mean we're even lucky i think some of our sort of larger stores are now starting to integrate that into their systems a little bit more but yeah it's it was really you know it was these little independents that were really the pioneers for it and yes yeah yeah but so she opened and i i had never even been to her store but i had been following her 
Um, and before I even started the podcast, I, I, I reached out to her and she was so generous to say, sure, I'll do that. Yeah. And I, I've, I was very like fangirl with her. I, I feel a little silly, but I was like, I just want to, I want to thank you for, for everything that you've done because you have opened up doors. You know, yeah. people know that there's a problem, but where do you start? Yeah. And so she opened that up and she also, on top of that, she, um, she was part of the team that, so Maine is the first, I think it's the first state in the United States that, that, um, made it, um, not illegal. Like we banned uh, single use plastic oh, and yeah, styrofoam, okay. yeah, which okay. of course went out the door. It like went out the window <laughs> during COVID, but, yeah. um, but we were the first state to ban single use plastic and she had a lot to do with that she was writing letters to the state representatives and she just like it was she was instrumental in that and i just yeah i just love her for that i just i mean that's one of the things i love about podcasting and and i just love finding these like and they're just when you meet them or, or you know even if it's virtually they're just these humble down to earth people they could just be just like you and me and actually they just remind me like how much power a, an individual can have to create these like changes and these movements and like you said sometimes like people know there's a problem like we know there's a problem with the plastics but you know we're like what what do we do and that you just need this one person who says well hang on a minute come along with me and we'll we can right. try doing this and they yeah. make yeah they can they just can make just make so much difference can't they and I mean that's quite an achievement to help get them completely banned in on a state level um right yeah I mean it's it's true like I mean we we know there's a problem with plastic but there's so much plastic available and how do you actually avoid the plastic you know someone needs to open that door and it was just it's just amazing and it's such a cool store uh, I had, she actually opened one in my town, oh, wow. um, <laughs> this, this past fall, which is, I'm going there this morning, uh, <laughs> but, um, and then, so, and then as I'm, as I've been going with the podcast, like I've met these incredible people and I, I credit Instagram <laughs> because it's so easy to just follow someone and comment on them. And then they'll notice you when you yeah. do that and you don't have to be friends to, yeah. to follow someone and say, I love what you're doing. Yeah. Um, but so I met this lady, well, through a Facebook page, actually, but she, so Tara Osman created an app to locate local produce and other oh, goods. So, yeah. you know, she, she started this because, um, you know, she has, she's a, stay at home mom and she and her kids were growing a little garden and you know so it's she's very passionate about that and um especially with the the you know single moms or stay at home moms like people that are just growing a little extra to make a little money but people don't know where those are you know yep. so this yep. app you know they can they can post for free that they have extra or you know that they're selling eggs or whatever and people will find them because, you know, there are farms, little farm stands everywhere, but you don't know where they are if you don't have. Yeah. I, I, option. I mean, I just, it reminds me of like my childhood. I mean, I'm not, I'm not that old. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm only about, I'm just about 10, 40, but I feel quite old sometimes. But, um, like I remember going on like holidays in, in Wales, in the UK and we would like we'd find I have this amazing memory of this like um she was actually an Italian lady and she had quite a small garden but she just grew all of these vegetables and like again it was like this local network I think we'd heard from the people we were staying with or perhaps someone like a you know a pub that we'd been to for lunch or something and they said oh you have to go and visit her and it was you know it was all sort of like you know just cash and in her you'd go in with her to her garden and she'd just pick the stuff fresh and and it was yeah but I, I mean like even now like you know 30 odd years later I can I can remember like this awe as a child of this what a great lady. experience to see yeah. it you know it's it's one thing to you know go to a farm stand and and pick the bag up or whatever and be like this is homegrown that's 
so great. But to see it on the plant yeah. <laughs> and have it picked for you yeah. is really, it's, it's touching. Like you yeah. remember that. And I, I think it's lovely that like, like you're saying with this lady with her app that she's like, she's now making that accessible to people now and using like this, you know, this modern technology to make it, to bring it easier into people's lives so they can, can find each other. And yeah. I mean, I think that's the, like, that's the nice thing about technology, isn't it? Is like, it can be used for good and, you know, it can Absolutely. connect all of us and allow us to, you know, band together with people that have common interests and we can find things locally and, and have be more sustainable just by doing that. Like, you know, I, I've got a glut of tomatoes. You've got a glut of squash. <laughs> we go Let's and barter trade. a little bit. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I mean, I think it's, and I mean, through her app, she's building community, you know, because yeah. these people in these areas don't always know. I mean, I'm sure that there are a lot of people that want to buy local, but you know, you go to the Whole Foods or the, you know, the natural food store and they've marked it up to make it worth their having to yeah. purchase it. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, someone, I, it, so her, um, newsletter is saying, you know, people just have an excess of eggs and eggs are so expensive to buy right now because of the avian flu that we've had. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. Have you yeah, guys had yeah the, we've had it too. Yeah. Um, really so eggs are very expensive and people that are just, they just have their little backyard flock are selling them for really cheap because they just have, you know, they just yeah. don't want them to go bad. Yeah. Yeah. So you can find cheap, local, organic, food and there are other things you know you can buy like i put my jams on there so <laughs> because i i i want more in my area and so mm -hmm. i i posted my jams and i'm like look at this it's a new option you know everyone should be using this because i think it i think everyone should you know um i just think it, it is a it's a beautiful community that she's she's connecting people yeah. that have extra food to people that want that food yeah yeah and it and like you said it can i mean if you're making jam you know it's you can make a batch that's make too much for yourself and your family and so you know the, you might have like half a dozen or a dozen jars or something and if that can go to someone else local um then it's you know it's making it's making the best use of things isn't it i think that's that's one of the the big issues right. i know um we certainly have in this country is like it's not that we don't have enough food we have a lot of food waste and you know this inability to get food where it needs to be before it's gone bad or yes. yeah absolutely oh my goodness it's it's tragic it really is because yeah. we do have the same issue i think it's like eight i feel like it's like 80 percent yeah it's like an 80 percent waste yeah it's is... quite i i mean like you i don't have the exact numbers but i know i, I read some like particularly over Christmas time as well and like the the mountains I mean we're talking like tons and tons and tons and tons of of waste and yeah any and I mean that's why I love your like preserving as well um because if if you I mean a lot of people don't know how to preserve things and obviously you, you had an unfortunate incident with your electric and losing your tomatoes in the freezer but even if you can just freeze things just people not don't even know that they can do that but it's like if you've got something in the fridge that's starting to like think oh hang on a minute I'm not going to use that before it goes off it's like even if you can just stick it in the freezer you can you know save save the money as well as like actually the waste isn't it it's just right Right. I mean, I had one of my more recent guests, um, she actually asked to be on my podcast, which I, I loved, of course, <laughs> but she, you know, she wanted to talk about her sustainable practices. And one of them is making broth, which doesn't sound like a really big deal. But, you know, she just says when she's making something, if she has scraps, you know, the ends yeah. of carrots or celery or, you know, lettuce or whatever, you can put it in a bag in your freezer and save it. And then you literally just add water to that and boil it for a while and you have broth mm -hmm. um and she was saying you know if you if you if you buy broth at the store it comes in that, that like weird carton that yeah. is like paper it's a waxy paper that is not yeah. recyclable or yeah. compostable yeah yeah um and they're like four dollars i mean they're like four or five dollars here at least um so and that's i think i want to say it's like 
maybe 32 ounces or something like that. But if you're making a big batch of broth, you're getting at probably at least three times that and it costs yeah. you zero. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. and she was so, I was so thrilled that she wanted to share that because it, that's the, that's the, one of the big points of the podcast is just to make it seem like sustainability is a really big word and it can feel overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be like, it's just, you know, it's doing something and it doesn't have to be big, but because it all adds up is if you are doing something to, you know, try to offset the the damage that we've done um and just to to try to lessen our footprint it just it's all it's all helpful it all adds up yeah I, know, I mean that's part of what i love about your story as well is like there's so many examples in your own life of um that other people can take on board i mean obviously you've got the space and the ability you're growing your own food but actually you volunteer at a farm where they're got your growing food that is helping people who are struggling to feed themselves and you don't need any land to do that do you i mean you don't even need expertise if you if you can find a project like that locally you're right. just you know you're just giving your your manpower basically and you're able to to help um people and the land as well you know it's it's just there's there's so many facets to it isn't there and um and i think that's part of what i like about podcasting is just we're giving voice to these people that are out there and, and showing other people like, you know, you don't have to come up with the ideas, just, you know, go, go and join this person because they're already doing it and you can just right. follow what they're doing or you can support them. And yeah, it's, you don't have to have, you know, have the ideas and, and start from scratch. Um, but yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, I, I think that's the thing, isn't it? It is overwhelming and it's about finding a way that people can, take that first step and mm -hmm. do something and be like you don't have to go from kind of zero to hero <laughs> and it's just yes yeah yeah I mean if people will ask me what I'm doing to be sustainable I'm like I don't know I mean I have a worm bin I yeah. garden I can but it doesn't again it doesn't seem like a lot like I am so this afternoon I'm attending a workshop with a girl that I'm going to be interviewing on Monday um but she's doing a kitchen herb um, growing workshop. So oh. learning to grow kitchen yeah. herbs and you know, that's it. But that at the same time, like you're going to have herbs all year round yeah. and it doesn't take that much work. And I just think that's genius. It doesn't, you know, you don't have to have a huge garden. You can do it anywhere. Yeah. On a, uh, you know, a window. If you have box a sunny window. Of, yeah. 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 So, so, and so I'll be interviewing her on Monday because I think that's, I think that's brilliant you know, to have, everyone doesn't have a big yard. Everyone doesn't have a greenhouse, but everyone's got a window, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it, it's the sort of hidden things that you don't realize with things like that as well. It's like, you know, if, if you can use herbs that you're just picking off your windowsill, you know, you, it hasn't gone into a jar. It hasn't gone through um, a you know, factory and, yeah. you know, all of, he hasn't had all of these inputs that, you know, you've got to sort of, offset and so yeah it's just like you know you've got your little plant <laughs> and you can take bits off of there and you know it and how amazing will that yeah. taste completely yeah. fresh yeah and it will clean your air yeah and <laughs> double yeah even, and, and keep pests away yeah. <laughs> and you know and it's sort of you know i i think that there's like mental and emotional benefits as well to having plants in in your environment um I had a guest uh, a few weeks ago and we were talking about how actually just looking at like green scenes so anything that you know is is sort of living and green has this um effect on your sort of emotional and mental state so yeah oh, it's, it's just absolutely it's so many like and and for most people like you say they would kind of discount that they wouldn't see growing their own um you know, herbs, vegetables, anything as, as actually taking a, a big step towards sustainability. But yeah, it's, but it is, are. it's these little, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, I always like, like single use plastics and plastic bags and things. And sometimes people um, feel like, oh, you know, how does me, just one person doing it? And it's like, but if, if, 
you know, a thousand people use one less plastic bag, you've saved a thousand plastic bags, you know, and then it's like, well, if you were going to use a plastic bag a week, it's like over the course of a year, that's 52 plastic bags. And then like, if there's a thousand of you, that's 52,000 plastic bags. And it's like these little tiny, what feels almost like you're not doing anything. And I think that's why people dismiss it, isn't it? They don't feel like it's enough because they feel like the problem's so big, but actually. Right. And then you just say, well, it's not big enough. I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. And then you're, you're not even trying. Yeah. But Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, so I'm hoping that with all of the guests that I'm having on that people will say, I can totally do that. I can make my own broth or I can grow herbs in my kitchen. Sure. Mm. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not a hard thing. Anyone can do it. And you're, you're being sustainable there. Done. Yeah, yeah exactly. Big tick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and then what's next? <laughs> but that's the thing, isn't it? Is it's like, it's just start with, with something, start with something small that, you know, doesn't feel big doesn't feel like you're making a difference you know don't be like i've got to change the world with like right. the one right. action i choose and um and then you you do you get this like momentum and things build and you go oh well i i'm doing that now and i'm doing that consistently like oh maybe i can do something else and i can do yes um, yeah. and before you know it when you look back like a you're year, a homesteader yeah <laughs> oh no it's it oh well that it's it's been really lovely talking to you amy i think that's sort of like that's probably a nice place to start to to look to wrap up is just you know encouraging people to just do one little thing whether that's growing some herbs on your windowsill or you know just exploring what you can do that feels manageable um but i don't know is that i mean one of the things that i started my podcast for was just to give people a place that felt hopeful so i don't know if there's anything or anyone that you have come across that made you feel hopeful that you would like to just perhaps share oh my gosh um i mean so many but really fiona like just i love i love the idea of your podcast i love I love that you just want to talk about nature. And like you were saying with the guest that you had a few weeks ago with the green, you know, the green, green screens and green, you know, yeah, yes. Like that is just, it is, it really is hopeful when you see green, the first grass in the spring, (laughs) you're like, oh my goodness. Mm. Oh my goodness. Things are growing. It's so wonderful. And and it's so true. I mean, nature is, Nature is magical. The outdoors is magical. And we just need to um, just, it's, it's amazing just to be able to appreciate it. I mean, the fact that we can see that. um, So I I want to recognize you (laughs) because I I think it's, I think it's wonderful. And I, I love that you're talking to and I love that your your podcast is so open. Like, let's just talk about nature in whatever way works for you. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think, I mean, that's that's what I love. I think nature means different things to different people. And there are so many entry points into what you can do to help nature, whether that is some of the ideas that we've been talking about around homesteading and sustainability, or whether it's, you know, people who are out there doing conservation of species or, you know, like some of the amazing guests you've mentioned as well, who are doing apps and, you know, they're, they're just there, I think what I want to celebrate is everyone's unique individuality as well. Cause I think that's important is like, you know, we are all unique and individual with our own story and we all have something to offer. And like, if we can all come together in community, because I think that's really important. I think probably for me, the key is community. Like if we can all come together in community with open hearts, open minds, and appreciate all of the people around us like we've got so many ideas and answers and ways forward and yeah it's just for me that's exciting and i think um i love i i just i just love giving voice to to other people and sharing same Um, yeah making it feel achievable and possible and not you know taking a bit of the overwhelm out of it and i love people like you who are just like you know just 
just grow some herbs <laughs> it's like as simple as that just just start with oh i'm learning i don't grow them very well so i'm taking the workshop <laughs> but i agree with you 100 about community i think it's i think you know if you if you look around at the people near you and the people that you know like everyone has different talents and if we all worked together instead of like competing like i can do and i i start i say this a million times on my podcast like homesteaders sometimes can be exclusive and just you know some people have the mindset like i don't need anyone like homesteading means i'm independent i can do it all yeah. but for me and for a lot, you know, a lot of the people that I've talked to, community is so important because yeah. like I like I said, I can I can can tomatoes. I just don't like it. Like <laughs> I, it's so much more fun with someone else there. Um, and so, you know, just to have someone to hang out with or someone to, you know, someone to weed your garden with you or, yeah. you know, to share. I mean, my friend who's staying with us right now, she's going to teach me how to make sourdough bread. And I'm very excited oh, about wow. that. Oh, so, like, you know, we're teaching each other different yeah. things. And if we all did that, what a beautiful place it would be. Yeah. Yeah. That, well, it would. And I think that's that's the lovely place to end on. It's just this beautiful vision of a world where we cherish each other and we cherish the natural world and we all just come together and fulfill our place and our part in it and appreciate everything that's around us and work for the greater good of, of everyone and our environment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mic drop right there, Fiona. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you, Amy. It's been an absolute pleasure. I've really loved talking to you and learning a bit more about what you do and exploring ideas with you. And, um, Same to you. Thank yeah. you so much for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Well, well, we'll have to do it again sometime. Yes, please. Thank you so much for listening to the Nurtured by Nature podcast. I truly hope this conversation has brought some hope and inspiration into your life. I would love to have these messages ripple out across the world. So if you can, please share this episode with your friends, leave a review on your favourite podcast player and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. I would love to hear from you, so please feel free to connect with me on the links provided in the podcast description. But most importantly, thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me. But don't forget to simply get out there and enjoy the natural world.